tonight, we have the honor of introducing you to eight extraordinary people. Eight people who all have something in common. All eight multiply good in our community. Good evening, everyone. I'm ABC News 4's Dean Stevens, and welcome to The Good in Us. Tonight, we celebrate our 2020 Jefferson Award winners. The Jefferson Awards were started back in 1972 by Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis, Senator Robert Taft, and Sam Beard. And speaking of Mr. Beard, allow me to introduce his daughter, Hillary Schaefer. If you think about 1972, right, the country was going through a constitutional crisis post Nixon and Watergate. And it was a country that was busily tearing itself down. And the founding vision of the Jefferson Awards was to tell the very best stories of the very best Americans, both nationally and locally, and use that power of storytelling with scale to elevate the best of the country and to inspire those who were doing amazing things to think that they could do more and to multiply the impact that they could have. Service for us is about the individual. It's about unlocking the potential in that individual through the lens of service as an intervention that in turn creates better communities. And today, as we think about how that translates, we are in a country divided again. And one of the few salves to division is service. We've become a culture of the self. And service is one of the few things that can bring you outside of the self. Hillary, thank you. Thank you for your commitment, your dedication, and your vision to multiplying good. Speaking of vision, it wasn't so much what he saw, it's but what he heard. Our January 2020 Jefferson Award winner heard the word, and then he made a call, a call to help a complete stranger. He was on patrol Christmas morning, bright and early. It was Christmas Day. Christmas Day I had to work. When he first saw the man, when he first heard the voice. The voice, I heard the voice said, hey, you're going to help this guy out later. And I was like, what? And I was like, I was like what? <laughs> you know, I'm going to help this guy out later. Five hours later, there he was again, three and a half miles from where Lieutenant Kevin Smalls first saw him. The road off of Sydney's road where I was actually traveling, I actually could have get there to the house quicker. But... Like I said, at the last minute, I heard, you know, turn down industrial roads. I took industrial road, and then lo and behold, there he was. I'm going to my fiance. See, I was- Lieutenant Smalls we knew something bigger was at play. When you're putting your faith in God and you're building that trust, it, a lot of that come from here is hearing, because the Bible said, don't be a hearer only, but a doer. So I stayed last night at a little church about three miles outside of here. Mm -hmm. Joey Brown was traveling from Fort Myers, Florida to Hampton, Virginia, nearly a thousand miles by foot. This is my 16th day walking. Wow. Come on, I'm gonna give you a ride to the uh, state line. I mean, county line, I'm sorry. Huh. I'll just sit it up here. Sure. What I'll do is I'll get you to the uh, 68. The voice returned. There would be a slight detour to Small's plan. I believe that God speaks to all of us, you know, in, in different forms, in different ways. You know, I heard, hey, you know what? You need to uh, take him to the bus station. The closer we got, then I heard, hey, you need to make sure this guy got home. How about we, I, we just get you a bus ticket? How about we do that? Are you willing to do that for me? Are you trying to see if I can help you out? Man, if you could do that, I'd appreciate it. It's Christmas Day, and here it is. I'm, you know, being led to be a blessing to him, to spend on a ticket to get him going. Merry Christmas. Quick question: Is the bus lines running today? When you help out others and you sacrifice, God is moved and pleased by those sacrifices. Smalls learned about sacrifice at an early age. A lot of people say I, I have a, a lot of his um, <laughs> traits or attributes. His father, Bruce Smalls, a South Carolina Highway Patrol trooper, was shot and killed in the line of duty in 1985. Kevin was two years old. I look at my life and all I've been through, and I'm able to relate to so many different people. I can relate to people who've lost a father, lost a mother, lost both. I can talk to people who have been homeless. I can talk to people who have walked different places, you know, went through certain struggles. 
So what's going to happen is we're about to start getting a lot of calls. Our call buyer is about to start picking up. Smalls worked through his struggles. Now, who then went to all three? Earned a master's degree and spends his extra time teaching courses in criminal justice. The things that I do and I may accomplish is not for me, but it's to help someone else. His direction comes from his earthly father. This is a way I honor him, you know. Um, it's like I'm picking up the legacy and continuing on, you know, and going further than what he did. And his heavenly father, who spoke to him Christmas morning. And then he sent me a message on Friday at 7.09, and he said, I will never forget what you did. And I told him, I said, you're welcome. <laughs> Kevin Smalls, a true servant and now a Jefferson Award winner, and he remains humble and appreciative and continues to serve his community. I actually had an elderly woman about maybe three months ago <laughs> saw me in the store, and she said, is your last name Small? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, you're the officer that did that nice thing for that. I said, yes, ma'am. And she told me God was going to bless me. So I said, yes. And I, I, I have to admit, God has been blessed with me, you know, for the act of kindness. Well, little did we know in February of 2020 how our lives were all to change, and little did we know how much peace and serenity we would all need for the next year or so. And that's why our February 2020 winner is so ironic that she provided spiritual bliss. A leaning pitcher of water. I started to get visions. Welcomes all who walk through her door. I know that when I say yes, I'm not alone. I'm just saying yes to being part of the their creation going on and that collaborators will come. They will bring their good parts to whatever your idea is, if you will let them. Tish Voigt's vision was to bring together a community as one. In the early days, she was literally the only one. It was pretty painful the first year and a half. Was it? Yeah, sitting in the chair and waiting for someone to come and learning how to wait, learning how to persevere, um, learning how to have trust. Okay, so those are three things, right? Wait, perseverance, trust. Slowly round through the spine, coming up to standing. Eight years later, Bliss Spiritual Co-op provides a place of peace in Mount Pleasant. Nice open belly with the inhale. There's a lot of things you can explore here. And so it's a good waiting in spot because different things heal us. Some don't want to talk about it. They want to do art or express themselves in other ways. Um, some want to go inward, some need to go outward. A Technicolor collection of classes. Have a clean body, mind and spirit so that we can tap into higher consciousness and divine realms. Can connect those whose lives have been turned upside down. One told me that he was on 16 different kinds of drugs, some of them for side effects of the other drugs. But, but just by coming here and becoming part of a community and um, volunteering here and feeling connected, he's not on any of them anymore. Bliss is a place for personal tune-ups. There is no fee for this facial or any other class. It is all free. You heard me right. I wanted to make sure that everyone could come to everything they needed when they needed it and then just be in trust that when they got on their feet that they would pay it forward for the next people that would come. It wasn't the parable of teaching a man how to fish, but a promise made in Malachi that kept the open sign lit. Picked a random page, had little stories and scripture and stuff in it. I landed on Malachi and it said, I will pour out a blessing so big you won't be able to take it in. And I said, oh yeah? The blessings are flowing. This is a place where small groups share deeply, where isolation meets consolidation. There's always someone here you can be with. And um, so we have a lot of retired people that come here and students who are college students who are away from home people who are recently divorced or separated, or single parents, um, people that are newly moved to the area, people that are vacationing here. 
that come every time they vacation here, they come back and see us. Just people seeking other people. Like every business, every nonprofit, Tish Voigt was forced to pivot. She provided virtual meetings and trusted that her faithful followers would help keep business flowing. And they did. And it did. And the fact that it kept playing during the beginning of COVID, um, it kept running and uh, it kept our, you know, our mission in the forefront of people's minds and helped with the getting the donations in when our building had to be closed. And it was really good timing. Christine England, she was also forced to pivot during the pandemic. So she took to social media. She helped raise awareness for local restaurants in need, restaurants that were struggling, all the while helping the community find places to pick up takeout in the middle of a pandemic. Floating by and barely getting by in this pandemic, eateries eagerly wait for the tide to return. We actually wanted to go support a couple restaurants and get takeout, and in doing so, I couldn't find any information. And so what I did was I would go on their Facebook page, I'd go on their website, and I'm like, are they doing takeout? Are they doing delivery? What are their hours? I can't find the menu. And it became this thing. So as I started texting my friends, they were sending me the info, and so I was collecting it. And so I threw it up on Facebook, figuring a couple people would read it and share the information, and that's how it kind of started. Christine England took lemons and made a tub full of lemon juice. Her Facebook page, Low Country Quarantine Takeout, found a quiche-like niche. In the very beginning, I was either the devil for creating this group and promoting coronavirus from restaurants, or I was a saint for trying to help. Um, and it was very a bipolar experience for me. Um, at the same time, the place was just to help from my heart and to make sure that restaurants had an avenue that people were speaking and getting their information out in one space because when it's spread out, it's hard. In just eight weeks, 22,000 people joined the page. We only talk about downtown Charleston and the peninsula. We only talk about big name chefs or people who have PR teams in marketing. We don't talk about the little places. And so in starting this group, I mean, I have probably two pages worth of restaurants that I want to go see and frequent and uh, try. A list that is a smorgasbord of mom and pop shops. I really thought this was going to be like a couple hundred friends who thought they were foodies and wanted to chit chat about where we were eating and where to go that was still open. As restaurants move from delivery and pickup to patio dining only, and now to its current restrictions. We really want to create more ways to engage people as we start to get back to this new normal. Christine changed the name of her Facebook page from Low Country Quarantine to Low Country Eat Out. The owners have been extremely gracious. They have been super grateful, um, you know, but they, for me, have been the rock stars because they've had to let staff go that have become family. They've had to do, you know, get rid of marketing or social media or PR if they've had it. Food is the thing that brings us all together, right? It doesn't matter if it's death, happy, sad, celebration. It, it brings us together. It's, it's a community. A community that has a new advocate, and she's bringing along tens of thousands of her friends. A year later, Low Country Eat Out continues to be a valuable resource. Her commitment to the Low Country food and bev industry is stronger than ever before. In fact, some restaurant owners we talked with said without her help, they would have been forced to shut down. I think it's really amazing. Mostly because you don't, you don't see the impact. You really don't. When you sit on Facebook, you don't get to see the ripple effect until someone tells you, it's a lot. Christine England, you are certainly seen now and you are certainly appreciated. Well, she made 2,400 free throws in 24 hours to benefit South Carolina Special Olympics. And when a deputy was in trouble, she stopped to provide comfort aid to meet our next two Jefferson Award winners. But as we go to break, a couple of our past winners and what this award has meant to them. That was a really critical time in our team's life. We had been around for about four years, but as a nonprofit, about two, trying to figure out what we were doing, who we were going to be, and also just in a time where our team was getting ready to graduate, get out of college, I've just been a better leader, I've been a better executive director, and I've been able to, to grow Charleston Hope in ways that I never would have imagined because of what the Jefferson Awards has given me. I'm not the type of person that I'm used to working very hard for what we do and 
A lot of times we don't get recognized at all for what we do. Um, so I just want to thank you, the committee, the president, everyone that's part of the Jefferson Award for doing this for us. It's, mean, it's meant the world to me and it meant the world to us. Welcome back everyone to The Good In Us. A low country woman found herself at the right place at the absolute worst time. July 1st, 2020, that fatal crash on the Donhold Bridge. But when a woman drove by and saw a deputy in trouble, that's when she stopped to provide aid. The cop was walking out the back of his car and a guy ran into his truck, car and it, the cop went flying up in the air and he's laying on the ground right now. Look, we got a sheriff's officer that got, officer that got hit by a car on the Donhole Bridge. Got hit by a car. They say he was hit by a car. Oh, oh my God. God. There's a lady talking to him. Heidi Dries, H-E-I-D-I-D-R-E-E-S. I'm an insurance adjuster. I do inspections for damages uh, that people claim on insurance. Traffic is flowing smoothly up the bridge. I was coming up from the bottom and, uh, and I could see the, the blue lights off on the right side. Out of the corner of my eye, um, I, see a, I see a crumpled up human on the side of the road. And, uh, and I, and, and it, and it wasn't a decision. I just stopped. You stay with me, sir. Stay with me, okay? Okay? You just keep breathing. You just keep breathing. You just stay here. Don't you leave me, okay? wasn't a lot I could do, but like I could let him know that I was there. He is, um, he is conscious, he is not alert, he is not responsive to me, he is still breathing, but we are losing him fast. And every now and then he would start to close his eyes and like leave. I would yell at him, you know, <laughs> honey, come back to me, open your eyes right now. We need to get him rolled onto his back, I don't want him to move a lot, he's busted up. You can just tell he was in a lot of pain. The sounds that a person makes when uh, when they're struggling is, uh, you know, something you won't forget. Like, I can't wait for the end of this when I get to hear his voice. This is Heidi. This is Mike Costanzo with the Sheriff's Office. I'm so glad to hear your voice. Uh, I can't even begin to tell you how much I appreciate you taking your time out to help me out. It was very scary. I didn't know if you were going to make it off of that bridge alive. That's amazing. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. But I wasn't leaving you. Well, thank you for not leaving me. I was not leaving you. We're connected now, whether you like it or not. And uh, like you can always call me. Sounds fair enough to me. Thank you. Mike. All right. That was really cool, huh, Mike? Yeah, that was. And that was clearly my higher power at work that, that put me there so that I could be the calm to be there, you know, for Mike on that bridge. Anything with a good foundation and, and good structure is going to be great again some days. A lot of what I do in life is living amends for the dirt bag that I used to be in the Wayback Machine. You have to have faith that, that things are going to work out just the way they're supposed to, regardless of how I interfere in them. However, if I have that opportunity to do the right thing, I should always take that opportunity. Heidi will tell you there were plenty of heroes on the bridge that day. In fact, her actions led to recognition from local lawmakers as well as from Representative Joe Cunningham on the U.S. House floor. This Jefferson Award, though, also extends to her recovery family. 
the ripple effect for me was that I am the face in a lot of ways of recovery, that there's hope for any addict to become a fine, upsetting citizen who does the right things in life and shouldn't be ashamed of where I came from. Well, it is certainly one of the hardest jobs in the world. I mean, there are no playbooks to being a parent. All it takes is a lot of love, a lot of commitment, and for our next Jefferson Award winner, pretty good form. She's followed the bouncing ball her whole life. And it has led Deb Antonelli to exactly where she's meant to be. In sports, we always talk about outcomes, right? Winning, the end result. Really, it's about the process. You know, it's about the journey along the way. What a journey it's been from her playing days at NC State. For College of Charleston to be a 13. To one of the game's most respected analysts. This is really unique that the four matches up in size with them. Usually you think the four C would be a lot bigger. Her most important starting five, her family. It's how we've used sport to raise our children, how we've used sport to teach team and why team is important in our society. The motivation behind her drive to help Special Olympics her son Frankie, a born entertainer. Frankie was born with Down syndrome. He's now a rising senior at Clemson and part of Clemson life. All right, let's go. There are five nonprofit boards that I sit on, and Special Olympics is not one of them, but that to me, because it's so personal for us, that uh, and, and having participated in Special Olympics. In basketball, shooters shoot. And that was Deb's goal two years ago. 2,400 free throws in 24 hours. It was so out of the box thinking, such a crazy idea that let's just try it and see how it goes. Year one, she raised $85,000. Year two, the pandemic put on a full court press. It was a couple of sleepless nights trying to figure out if this was the right thing to do based on the pandemic and the economic situation that our country's in. So would people have extra change that they could throw Special Olympics? She was forced to change venues from a controlled climate to her home court, her driveway, but her shot never wavered. Neither did the support. A great testimony to South Carolina and sports. I mean, if you just think about Dabo Sweeney and Frank Martin, uh, Dawn Staley, Earl Grant, Duger Bauckham, uh, Chris Singleton, Mia Hamm, all the, the celebrities. Thank you so much for being with us. Absolutely. This is awesome. I love when you do this. When the final shot was made and the net was finally cut, there would also be one final check cut. I've never met Bill Murray. I always wanted to meet him. And I said, hey, Mr. Murray, I, I, I've always wanted to meet you. Uh, my name's Debbie Antonelli. He says, I know you. You're the free throw girl. I saw you. And he, and he knew all about the fundraiser. And he said, how many did you make? Now, how, how many did you make? I said, I made 2,400. He said, well, that's what you're going to get. <laughs> and so he wrote a check for $2,400 on the first tee at Bulls Bay. And that pushed you over 125? That put us over 125. Her shot is pure. Her servant's heart is nothing but net. Her purpose is to provide hope and inspiration. I know there's some parent out there that's just starting their journey with their child that has intellectual disability and Special Olympics is a great landing spot for anybody that needs something more. Some of the money raised last year, Clemson Life took a trip of a lifetime. A Special Olympics tournament in Atlanta followed by an Atlanta Hawks game. This more than just a game for Deb. When programs are being cut, Special Olympic games sidelined because of the pandemic. Raising awareness is more important than ever. It doesn't change the, still the need for healthy lifestyles and, and conditioning and training and preparing to be the best that you can be in other aspects. So we just sort of shift our focus a little bit away from the games and on the process. So when we leave tomorrow morning... Tomorrow Deb's process keeps her on the court. Great. There is no game plan for her last dance. I'm excited about next year. Like Frankie says, strong and powerful. You gotta be strong and powerful, so uh, I'm working on it. 650 people donated last year. 650 people received handwritten thank you notes from Debbie because, well, that's who she is. To her, this award is all about the Special Olympians and their parents. Special Olympics obviously is really important to our family and it, it resonated with me in a different way because 
Uh, I know how important the funding is for Special Olympics. I also know how taxing it is to prepare for that event and it motivates me to, to get ready. For our next winter, it all started with a Thanksgiving food drive in rural Georgetown County back in November of 2019. A family had walked five miles, but when they arrived, that food was gone. It crushed our Jefferson Award winner and ignited his servant's heart. 42 slabs I've gotten on here one time. The sizzle is saved for the rack of ribs. The secret sauce is what set the table of giving. And this is my great grandmother's uh, vinegar pepper based sauce. This is from uh, 1892 as far as the history that I have for it. Um, her name was uh, Eliza Blake and uh, she did a lot of cooking for the community. Elliot Middleton's barbecue joint in McClellanville now open for business. We're ready, we're just waiting for uh, things to get back to normal and we can do a lot of uh, community oriented events. It's what his family has done since the early 20s. That's what has trickled down into the family generations from my grandmother to my mother, to me and to my kids as well too. We just want to help people. That's what's in us. Just up the road on Highway 17 sits a white cinder block garage. The one time home of McNeil's Tire Shop has given a lift to Elliot's latest community project. If your car shuts down today, how many things will go in the pattern of not working? Doctor's appointments, uh, kids to school, going back and forth to work. He's not just fixing up cars. Right here is one of the uh, parts of the gasket train. He's handing them out to people in need. Inside this engine looks pretty good. It's not gunked up or anything like that. And it doesn't cost them a dime. And it should be a pretty good running car for the customer. The locals in the community, they are um, anonymous when they gave donations and like, hey, you know, we want to help you with this. And here's, you know, here's a gift card to AutoZone if you need to get parts for this. And that started letting me see that, hey, it's not just me that want to help folks. There's other folks that want to help folks as well, too. He received the first donated car in August. He found the first recipient through social media, a mother of two with a medically fragile child. She was mentioning about it on Facebook and um, about the car situation, the, uh, the walks back and forth to the hospital in the rain, in the cold. Um, she has a two-year-old and a four-year-old. The car was delivered three weeks later. Never met the guy a day in my life. He gave us the car. He even, you know, paid three months of my insurance so that I can save up the money to finish paying for the rest of it. So who does that? I don't know. A saint. <laughs> A saint, a, a angel. So we replaced the bumper, and then we also replaced the radiator condenser, the radiator, the fans here. And that pretty much got it to where it was drivable. He doesn't ask for anything in return. You know, he just gives from his heart. The feeling and the expression that they give you, that's, 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 what, I, that's what I enjoy. It ain't about nothing else except getting that feeling from someone knowing that they are appreciative of someone helping them to make their life a whole lot better. The hometown boy who grew up in the peace and quiet of McClellanville is now making noise by passing down a legacy of giving. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. It won't take much to get it back up and going. And the similar things that I do, and they're like, well, you know, your great-grandfather or your great-great-grandfather did similar to the same things, and I'm like, well, it's true what they say about it being in the blood because that's, that's just in me. Whether it's under the hood of a car or the hood of a smoker. We let that sit on there for about an hour and a half before you flip it. Elliot Middleton has an appetite for selfless service. Elliot has taken in dozens of cars since winning the Jefferson Award. He continues to work in the little off time that he has and continues to bless those in need. But just to be able to be recognized for something and you didn't even, I wasn't, wasn't looking for anything or anything like that, just to be you know, nominated by, of course, then you, Dean Stevenson, contacting me about it. I'm like, this is great. So it's life changing. It has definitely changed. Um, there's a lot of younger folks that come up and they're like, hey, man, you're the guy that won the Jefferson Award. All right, coming up, two more award winners. One, a longtime Charlestonian who decided to give to a pastor and need, and the other just in town for a couple of weeks. We found a way to give back to our veterans. 
But first, as we go to break, two more of our past Jefferson Award winners. The Jefferson Awards means everything to me. It provided a safe space to share the most tragic time that hit our family. But the beauty of it is that it connected so many people through not my tragedy, but through the many ways they were touched. And it provided a safe space for them to know that they're not alone, which birthed a physical safe space that now meets many, many people. I love that ABC News 4 shares positive and uplifting stories of what's going on in the Low Country. My organization, Katie's Crops, is working to help fight hunger in the Low Country, and ABC News 4 has been an incredible supporter, always sharing about what we're doing and making sure that we reach all of those in need. Welcome back to The Good In Us. One of the cool things about the Jefferson Awards is some of our winners are called and nominated by viewers, just like you. And that's exactly what happened with our next winner. A local bishop called me and said, hey, Dean, you want to meet an angel right here on Earth? It's a sign of the times. Development has led to big changes along Clements Ferry Road. And there was one time we knew everybody that lived in this area, and now we do not. But it didn't change the feel of this small community church. We stay faithful to the Lord, love our neighbors, and love people as we want to be treated. Dr. Marilyn Porche is the bishop at Holy Rock Temple of God. She grew up in this church. It's where my parents are buried. It's uh, where my oldest siblings I have uncles and aunts, I have family that's buried there. Cousins, church members. Her youngest son, Reginald, was buried here 11 years ago. Murder is totally different from being sick and die. A person that is murdered never get to say goodbye. A person that is murdered is snatched away from you, just snatched away. I have to say to the Lord, Lord, you know. Mm -hmm. You know why you didn't allow that. As Dr. Porsche prays for guidance from above. I did not want our graveyard to be like I have seen so many African-American graveyard. Just no system, no structure. She's focused on cleaning up what's below. Our graveyard is very small and our congregation is small as well, but I want it to be a pleasant place. And to me, it wasn't a pleasant place. When I walked through it, I, I didn't feel good. You know, I said, I could be a better steward of this, mm -hmm. but I've got to get the right person to do it for me because I don't know what to do. So I can show you this, this is what we're trying to do here. Lewis Moore of Forsberg Engineering and Surveying was a perfect fit for Dr. Porsche's blueprint. So we're trying to give them a pathway so they can walk. Moore plotted more than 100 new resting places. Who comes on their day off? And the way um, Lewis works, I mean, he starts at seven in the morning when our brothers come and he's gonna work with us. But his work in the graveyard hasn't stopped. I got to meet the men of the congregation and we just we worked for about six and a half seven hours together and it was just it was a good time i mean i enjoyed getting to meet him and getting to work with him he's not just pointing he's down there showing the brothers what to do and how to do it and i said this is amazing the elder that you met with earlier i mean I was out here working with him. I had no idea his age, and he is carrying wheelbarrows of dirt and sand around like the younger people. And then at lunchtime that day, I found out he's 86 years old. And I mean, it's just incredible to meet and be able to work with people like that. Moore grew up in Charleston and learned about serving at an early age. We were teenagers. My parents made us go to crisis ministry and serve food once a month. 
So it pretty much started there. He's also cut out his fee. That's right, he's providing his service to the church free of charge. When you meet these people and you start to work with them, it's, it's not always about the money. You can drag from the low there and go up the hill. I mean, you get to meet, you get to meet people and create friendships. Lewis Moore, he walks in faith, pours his heart and soul into serving others. This area right here is area I. And has been the answer to Dr. Porche's prayer. Dr. Martin Luther King answered the question, say, you want to be great? Then serve. And so he asked these blessings and I anoint them in the name of Jesus, in the name of your beloved. Amen. 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 Lewis also multiplies good with the Charleston chapter of Homeworks of America. That organization repairs homes for the elderly. And yes, they do it free of charge. For him, the Jefferson Award, just a way to spread the news of service. We try to teach the younger people about giving back. And uh, I mean, it gives them the opportunity to see what we're trying to help, uh, help other people. To serve certainly means something different for everyone. But for a low country man, his service is all about serving those who serve our country. When he took off from New York State to the low country, Rick Walls' mission remained the same. It's all about getting the message out there in the community that we know you love them and you just don't know how to show that and that's what we do. We open up doors and we are able to channel all that energy and give it right to those you know, warriors that, uh, that deserve it. His nonprofit, Towns for Troops, began 10 years ago outside of the walls of West Point. I went to a local army hospital. I was asked to go see if I could put a smile on a face. The, uh, the men and women that were there were despondent. The uh, morale was very, very low. Many of them suffering from uh, TBI, tra traumatic brain injuries, uh, PTSD. My generation called it shell shock. What I saw that first day when I was there changed my life. Life of service is a family affair. Rick's grandfather served in World War I, his father World War II. Richard Walls was blown off the first deck of the Arizona during the attack on Pearl Harbor. He survived. There were also two uncles who served, but Rick could not. I wasn't able to serve my country when I was a young man. I was uh, severely injured when I was 18. So recuperated from that, long convalescence, learned how to walk again. But he still found ways to serve 47 years of volunteer firemen and now serving those who serve our country. Last year alone, he held 67 different events, touched more than 4,600 servicemen and women, a small sacrifice for a life of sacrifices. Graduations, brothers and sisters, going fishing with their buddies, holidays, birthdays. Imagine the first day of school when your child gets on that bus and you're not there. A single mother who's raising her child goes for advanced training out in Utah mountains and gets deployed out to the mountains in Afghanistan. She missed her first parent-teacher conference. So we can't replace that as average citizens. But what we can do is come up with some morale boosting events. Walls' boots have been on the Lowcountry ground for just seven weeks. He's already received a warm reception from his Cane Bay neighbors. When you're deployed and we hear about the birth of your new child, we're going to get a layette item handmade to you. We're going to steer it that way. So in order to do that, I went and I talked to the ladies at the knitting club, said, this is who I am, this is what I do. So here are Santa's elves packing the stockings. And he's held one community event already, a walk for awareness. What still haunts me is, on average, there are 22 men and women, veterans and active duty, that take their life every day. And that number has been the same for about 10 years. Why does that have to be 22 for 10 years straight? Why can't it be 18 and then 15 and then five and then zero? I don't have the answer. But he does have reminders, dirt, challenge coins, flags. My son just came home from his deployment in Afghanistan and he flew a couple of flags and uh, he presented mom and dad with this one. Gifts of thanks from those he's touched. One of the most powerful things that's ever happened to me in my life is to have someone in uniform come up to me and say, you saved my life. Rick has also been awarded the Volunteer Service Award from both former Presidents Obama and Trump. But all Rick Walls cares about are the smiles. Just recently, we had enough supplies collected from the community 
to fill over 1,200 Easter eggs for an Easter egg hunt for the, the military children. It's just been, it's been nonstop, which is fantastic. We're here to put smiles on faces, and that's what we've been able to do. Coming up, who will represent the Lowcountry at the National Gala later this year, and a shot to win the Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis Award for Community Service. But first, two of our past winners who earned that award. When Dean and ABC News 4 found out about my story, I didn't even have a nonprofit, but because of them shedding light on what I was trying to do, helping those who are struggling with their mental health, through their platform, I was able to spread about my idea and make it into a nonprofit to what it is today. Not only was it scaled across Charleston, but on a national level, and it truly is all because of Dean Stevens and ABC News 4. Dean has a very, very unique talent um, to tell a story in ways that others can't. Um, you know, I think that my story can sound very basic, but when Dean tells it, it sounds like a motion picture. And it really just gives you hope um, to know that there are more people in the world trying to do good. Welcome back to The Good In Us. So when does it start? When does service over self set in? For some kids at Burke High School, it starts very early. They have not missed a step. Despite COVID, they have managed to reach out to people and to children and families in the community. And they have stayed in sync. All about like helping out in the community and like not asking for nothing in return. This are the kindness of our hearts. They are the heart and soul of Burke High School Students in Action program. It makes me happy and I don't know, yeah. kind of emotional because like making a change in the community is one of the most important things to me. And that knowing that I have the opportunity to do that is amazing. It's service before self for the students. They've donated food to the food bank. One of the programs that I really enjoyed doing was feeding the homeless. I see them on the corner every day, just going to work. It's like, it's like an everything thing. It's a, it's a good feeling to have somebody smile at you who hasn't eaten, you know, just giving them food. It's a good feeling. Helped build a pink playhouse west of the Ashley. We helped them plant like little plants and everything. We actually took time to build the house and actually seeing it come together it was actually heartwarming and seeing all the kids playing it, it, it was cute. And reached out to seniors at Joseph Floyd Manor. That was my um, project that I think was the most helpful because, I don't know, just giving people notes and letting them know that there are people there that care. That was really sweet. All right, everyone, we're going to give Antoine two snaps on two, one, two. The group has clicked since its formation three years ago. We have the wonderful opportunity to partner with communities and schools. And so as a re result of our partnership with them, we were introduced to Doors to Dreams. These kids aren't scared to dream. The sky's the limit. They are wise beyond their years. It changed me, like, for the better, like, looking at the world in a different view, point of view how seeing how some people is doing good and some people not doing as much good and you see like you can actually help them way out as much as you can. It makes me feel happy towards others and being able to push others to achieve their dreams because this this group makes me achieve my dreams. They are dream chasers, TikTok makers, and it's all in the palm of their hands. Talk to y'all soon, all right? Y'all get back to class now. Get back to class now. You know, there's a lot of people that's in need, and like, there's a lot of people who need to know that there's someone out there that actually cares. Even though it's like a small impact, you know it can make such a big difference in someone's life. Those Burke students also eligible now to take part in the National Gala later this year. Two years, um, I was severely cyberbullied on Facebook, beginning with an anonymous profile created to destroy my self-worth and my reputation. You heard from two of our past winners who earned the National Community Service Award in D.C., Emily Torchiana, and her mission to help raise awareness for mental illness. I'm really uh, speechless. And Kristen Rainey and his work with his nonprofit Men Against Domestic Violence. Time now to learn who will represent the Lowcountry this year. Since we started partnering with them four or five years ago, we select one person to represent us at the National Gala. 
and I'm honored to tell you that you've been selected oh. to be that person. And I will tell you that you embody the spirit of this award. It is about service and self over service, about commitment and dedication. But this year, more than any other year, you did it in the middle of a pandemic. You could have walked away. You could have said, there's not gym space. But you turned your driveway into a place where you raised $125,000, not just for Special Olympians, but for their parents as well in that organization. So I want to let you know that and well, congratulate I, you on uh, that. Well, thank you. I mean, that's, uh, that's not what I expected to, <laughs> to hear or was anticipating at all, um, Dean. I didn't do this for any recognition for oh, an, an award or I did it because we live it and we understand what sport means and why it's important to play and everyone should deserve a chance to play and Special Olympics provides that for families like mine and uh, you know my son Frankie's my inspiration and I, I, I mean I'm, I'm overwhelmed thank you uh, um, I don't even know what to say so congratulations to Deb and all of our 2020 Jefferson Award winners. As we leave you tonight, though, we'd like to remember a 2018 winner, Mr. Charles Robinson. Oh, that was cool. I, he come running up with that jersey, oh, that sweatshirt, and I was going, oh my. <laughs> the West Ashley resident who picked up trash in his neighborhood passed away in December. We dedicate tonight's special to Charles and hope that everyone should carry his sense of commitment. This could get recycled. <laughs> and service, because after all, that is the good in us. Thank you for making our days a little brighter. From a great neighbor, our good neighbor, thank you again. Thanks for joining us. Now you see it, now you don't. <laughs>